What's going on guys? My name is Triforce Diction. So today is going to be a a bit of a different video. This is not going to be a news type video pertaining to COD Mobile. Rather, it's going to be a video stating the reason why I haven't really been uploading frequently like as of, you know, recently. As you guys know, I usually post maybe about 2 to 3 videos per week. But of course, it's been lowering ever so slightly. I mean, back in the day, I mean, I used to like make uploads almost every single day with COD Mobile content. But as of recently, it's kind of changed. And obviously, of course, a lot of things have changed within my life. Obviously, I, I recently graduated from college, so I'm currently awaiting to get a job, maybe at Border Patrol or Customs, you know, something like law enforcement related. But it's also the fact that this game does play a huge role as to why I have not been, you know, playing this game too much or as much as I usually would and even uploading. So first off, I want to actually begin with how the game has been performing recently. And I'm not talking about like, you know, glitches or anything like that, but just how the devs are currently handling things with, you know, the test servers, with these updates and really how long these seasons always run for. So first off, uh, I want to actually talk about the season lengths. And I know for a long time, this has been kind of like a weird topic because I know there are some people that really have no problem with having a 35 day season. But I know there's a lot of people that kind of get bored just, you know, waiting for the next season to begin. Because usually, I mean, I guess back in the day, we would get like 28 day seasons. And from there, you know, we get the next one and it still feels kind of fresh, you know. And normally I don't mind having a 35 day season if we're about to get a major update with a lot of stuff coming out, you know, new camos, new like special game modes and stuff like that, you know, stuff that would change the game for the better. But that's not really what we're seeing nowadays. That will lead to the test servers, but I'll get to that right now because I know I have a lot to say about the test servers that I've been wanting to get out of my chest for a very, very long time. But going back to these issues of overly long seasons. So yes, the 35 day seasons are not really the best in the world because by the time you reach midway through the season, you've pretty much done every major challenge, every major event, and you've already gotten diamond on the new weapon. Or if there's ever like a melee weapon, you probably got diamond on that as well. So there's not really much to do for you other than, you know, clan war grinding and maybe going up in like to legendary rent just in case you guys haven't done that yet. Because I know there's a lot of people nowadays that are complaining about ranked, saying that the skill based matchmaking is too tough, making every match extremely frustrating which is, I mean, like, come on, guys. I mean, it's not exactly Modern Warfare 2, but I understand why it could be frustrating. Trust me, like, the last two times I've gone Legendary, it's been hell. However, a lot of people are a bit uh, motivated to do so now because if you do get ranked a certain number of times within the year, you are going to get a Legendary skin. And for me, personally, I don't really see it as worth it. I mean, you're just kind of letting yourself suffer in ranked. I mean, it's not really... The most balanced game mode in the world but yes uh for all of you guys that are interested i mean more power to you if you want to keep suffering like that but yeah i know a lot of people especially ferg i think it was ferg and bobby plays that have been asking to have sbmm toned down or at least removed in order to make ranked a little bit more enjoyable for me in my personal opinion i think it should stay maybe it should be weakened by a little bit because i mean keep in mind when i was you know grandmaster two or three i mean i would go against like top five thousand players which was kind of stupid i mean i would have assumed that you know the top five thousand players would be going against people around their league and i'm not even legendary at that point yet so i always thought that was kind of weird and fishy but I think SBMM should stay there given that it's, you know, a ranked mode. But also going back to the long season thing. Yes, it's you pretty much finished everything like midway through. Um, I mean, really, the only exciting parts are maybe the draws. If you are actually someone that are, is interested in getting them for the most part. But yeah, I mean, even when there's signature attachments, I mean, the hype is there for like a day or two and then you don't really see anyone using it again. If anything, with the ICR mag, I haven't really seen a single person actually use that attachment. I know they probably unlocked it, but I don't really see them using it. So now I want to get into the test server portion of this video. And this one I'm really excited to talk about because I could finally get it off my chest. So every now and then, obviously, we do get these 
different uh, test servers that kind of show us what's going to come for the next season. Sometimes they only have it for like the Chinese version for like those seasons that usually have a mini update, you know, just to at least give us an idea of what's going to be changed. But then, of course, we have the major test servers that have all the content for the next two seasons. I want to discuss the ones that actually involve the content for two seasons, because this is something that has been irking me for a very long time. So whenever we do get a major test server, I mean, at least back in the day, we would be able to test a lot of different things. The new perks, the, I guess, the new operator skills. I mean, that's something that we still do right now, but not to the fullest way possible. I mean, they're still being fine-tuned. I mean, if anything, it, it kind of seems like we get a very, very early version of a test server because, I mean, there's so many things that change before the final update comes out. And most of it is just stuff that we are not even aware of. Back in the day, if there was like two different weapons, we would actually be able to test those weapons in the test server. But over time, it has not been the case where like, yes, we do get the names of the weapons that are coming to the game, but only because the leakers on duty are the only ones that are able to figure that out with all the data mining and everything. We wouldn't know if it wasn't for them. And that's not a bad thing. But at the same time, I mean, the test server is there for you to test things that are upcoming for the next game. But how can we do so if there is literally nothing to see on those test servers? Back then, let's say, like, you know, back when the AS Val was coming out, you were able to test that weapon in the test server and give your feedback to the devs to tell them whether or not it's too broken or maybe it's a little bit too weak. Is the bullet speed bad? You know, stuff like that. But we don't get that anymore. It's just the only things that we could ever really test out are basically the new operator skills rarely or just the new perks. And that's it. That's all we could ever test out. As time goes on, they started revealing a lot less than these, in these test servers. I mean, they used to show us what the seasonal camo was going to be for the next tournament season. Now they don't even do that. I mean, like it first started from them showing you the camo from them just having the name and then now not even having the camo at all at the test server. So we would end up finding out what the camo was going to look like after we got the full update. So with all that in mind, there's no real point of having a test server if you're not going to let us see what the new weapons are or how they even function. I mean, even with Season 7 where we got the ability to put ultra frames with very high graphics, it, that was not even on the test server. We ended up figuring that out after... I actually, I, I ended up figuring it out from Squally, like from one of his videos. I didn't even, I wasn't even aware that was a change and not even in the patch notes, they even bothered to explain that. And with such a feature that gigantic, you would think that they would hype it up, but they never did. And that's the crazy part. Say what you want about Squally or even Stealth Cod Mobile. I know that guy is clowned on a lot, but you have to admit the stuff that he figures out is pretty important because I mean, let's be honest, the devs are not going to tell us. And the thing is that they withhold a lot of different stuff from the test server because again, I, I literally believe that we get like a very, very early version of the test server. I mean, not even the weapon changes are in the test server, so we can't even test out how good the weapons are going to be so we could be ready for it in the next season. We don't even know that. And then when it's all said and done, you think that, oh shit, we're gonna get a lot of different features for this next update, but then it like we literally get something that's, we don't even get really anything like groundbreaking anymore. I mean, yes, the, the graphics thing was pretty groundbreaking, I'll be honest. But again, I mean, the minority of players are probably only going to have access to that feature. So it doesn't even matter. And that's probably why it was not even discussed, because only a small amount of devices could even run very high graphics with ultra frames. And look, maybe I'm just like judging them too harshly with the test servers, but you have to admit, I mean, they're like sometimes there's no point in downloading it at all. I mean, like sometimes you just have to wait hours to download everything and it's very irritating too because it always makes you do that whole um that whole tutorial every single time that takes up a few minutes but then you also have to download all the skins that you receive so it's just like it's a whole hassle for literally nothing because again there is nothing on these test servers for the most part but for all we know the next test server there might be a lot of different features that we could find out with zombies typically when there's something like that groundbreaking with a certain mode yeah there's obviously going to be changes within the test server like that you would actually notice i mean they're not just gonna like give us nothing i mean i hope but again i wouldn't put it past them 
So for zombies, I mean, for all we know, we could end up seeing maybe there's a new grindable camo or there's a new map that we could see. But at the same time, like sometimes they don't like it, like they say that they're going to change a lot, but then they end up not doing so. And I know a lot of people as excited as they are for getting a lot of zombies changes, you know, for season nine. A lot of them are probably betting that it's probably just going to be a new map and that's it. They're not even going to add new content. They're not going to add a grindable camo or anything like that. Because at the end of the day, they usually do the bare minimum. And I mean, this is a golden opportunity for them. I mean, they could add Aether Crystal for um, all the more recent weapons. I mean, they could just do that. Um, have a way to grind it within zombies. Or just have a completely different grindable camo challenge for zombies. You know, like let us finally get the full version of Dark Aether. Some animated fucking completionist camo instead of always getting stationary shit. Be honest with me, I want you to go into the comment section and tell me, all of you guys that actually use Damascus on your weapons, even after unlocking it. I mean, it, it's so... It's it's kind of like a crime at this point that they haven't made a, a challenge to give you a camo for getting everything all diamond. I know I, I complain about this a lot, but I mean, given the fact that a lot of people grind this game endlessly, I mean, you would think that they would add something like that at this point. But I think we as a community should probably blame ourselves for that too, because we have golden opportunities to ask, hey, when are they gonna do this? Or hey, when are they gonna do that? You know? And you know, we have dev Q and A's, or sometimes we have a blog post every time a new season comes out where we could ask, you know, questions like that. But do we waste those fucking opportunities like idiots? I, I'll tell you that much. You know, there, there'll be questions like, oh, when are you going to add this mode again? Or, oh, when is, are we ever going to get another Urban Tracker skin? Like, dude, who the fuck cares about that? You're wasting your fucking time asking those stupid questions because obviously they will have those at some point. But like, why don't you ask major questions such as, oh, uh, what are you going to do to optimize ranked in the future? Or how are you going to fix this bug for Battle Royale? But no, it's always a dumbass fucking question. And I'm a thousand percent convinced that had no one asked about zombies, we probably would not be getting a change for the anniversary. Let's be honest. Because, dude, keep in mind, they do keep a lot of uh, stuff, you know, into consideration. I mean, like when Ferg was talking about persistence and how OP it was, it got fixed like the very next season, you know, like we just need to have a strong enough voice to have uh you know have these questions be answered and maybe have them do something about it i mean if you think about it if anyone i mean if there was more questions about asking oh hey are we gonna get a uh all diamond camo reward for getting diamond on everything we probably would have had something by now and look i have myself to blame as well for the all diamond reward again um probably a minority has gone diamond on all their guns already but i know there's still a lot of people that are grinding out the things so maybe it's my fault that I haven't asked um, on the blog post, or at least wasn't fast enough to ask whether or not that they will add something like that, or at least have them take it into consideration. Because as cool as it is getting seasonal camos, um, you know, every two seasons, it sucks when it's a very shitty one. I mean, look at the bathroom tiles one, the, the what's it called, the pixelated aggression. Like, like that's another thing, like... We could kind of be more mentally prepared if all that stuff was in a test server for us to see, but we don't. So like we end up getting like super overhyped and overexcited about the next seasonal camo. And then it's just like, then when you finally see it, it's just like, really? So we have to wait another two seasons to hopefully get a better seasonal camo. But again, I mean, just because you make seasonal camos doesn't mean you just could just forget zombies or just multiplayer as well. I'm sure if you made an all diamond camo or even a medal for that, people would actually be more incentivized to play the game more. And the medals as well is something that I do have to talk about. So we do have these medals that are always displayed in the multiplayer lobby that kind of shows like certain milestones, like getting legendary ranked a few times or, you know, buying a certain amount of like legendary prestiges or even upgrading your mythic characters or some shit like that. But that's the problem. They only have medals for that. Like they don't really have milestones for, hey, getting... Damascus on this many guns or you know, I mean, I mean it would have worked for a diamond as well I mean, you know get diamond for 10 guns for 20 guns Like, you know, we could have had a badass medal for that But they haven't even thought about doing shit like that Like imagine if they had a legendary medal where it tells you to get a nuke in multiplayer ranked like 50 times or some shit I'm sure there'll be a lot of people grinding for that and given how hard ranked normally is 
that's one hell of a challenge. So if you're one of those players that are good enough to get that, I mean, that would be amazing. But they don't think about that shit. Or they could also have like really long milestone rewards about like, you know, even for kills, like we do have a stats thing for a reason, you know, like for someone that got a million kills, they could get a pretty good medal, like just, you know, total. That's what I mean. But you guys get the point. I mean, or get like maybe a hundred thousand kills or like 10,000 kills with pistols or some shit like that to have a medal for that as well. I mean, they only implement medals basically just for stuff that you bought or just a milestone for ranked. But nothing really for camel grinding or anything in between. And keep in mind, with challenges like getting like 10 different uh, legendary prestige skins. I mean, that's cool on paper, but dude, that's going to take so fucking long to get. So might as well add more medals to at least pass the fucking time or something like that. So now let's move on to Clan Wars. And holy shit, we're already 16 minutes into making this video. But yes, there's still quite a bit to talk about. So let's actually talk about Clan Wars again. So yes, Clan Wars is still the same shit as usual. We're only playing on fucking feature playlists for the most part. Um, the clan rewards more or less stay the same. You get the characters, you get the same characters every fucking time. The only difference now is that you get different types of outfits that you could put on them, that, but that's basically it. We never get any new Clan Wars characters or any uh, skins that are actually worth getting. So it's a pretty damn shame. Uh, you guys already know my take on that. Hopefully they fucking add more improvements within a test server, which they, let's be honest, they probably won't. But yeah. Uh, so now let's actually talk about actually the players of this game. Because, dude, I don't know. Shit has changed. This game has played, has changed so much where I had to, like, change so many things about how I play the fucking game, dude. <laughs> and it's a good thing that I'm talking about this right now, given the fact that like, you know, as of the recording lengths of this video, I'm, I've already made it to this point where I have extreme amounts of trouble beating these guys alone. I end up losing the match after gaining a huge fucking lead. And that's actually what I wanted to talk about. And again, this is a perfect fucking example. So the player base, for some reason, for these past fucking few seasons, for I don't know why, have had their balls shrink massively. And what I mean by that is the fact that holy fucking shit there is so much goddamn camping like this game has basically become modern warfare 2 mobile and warzone mobile hasn't even come out yet the camping in this game there is no doubt has increased fucking significantly like oh my god dude you can't even play team deathmatch anymore without a lot of people camping in the fucking like uh, a head glitch or some fucking random ass corner like it is crazy how much this game has changed and in certain maps like this one, like Rust or even fucking Nuketown, it is a fucking disaster, dude. Like, it, like there's always someone on a tower. There's always someone on the head glitch where that freaking those crates are. It's just absolutely insane how much people camp or how cheap people are willing to play just to fucking get a win. Like, it's so dirty, dude. So I know most of you guys that are probably playing this game are touch players. Uh, no, no problem with that. But let me give you guys some insight of how things are in controller lobbies. Cause I think if anything, like, you know, you guys probably should be grateful that you're not going against controller players. Cause you guys would fucking hate it right now. Because as of right now, our controller meta is basically just the Maddox or the Growl. The Growl is probably one of the most broken weapons that I've seen in this game for a long time. And holy fucking shit, everyone is using it. I don't know why they thought it was a good idea to have a gun like that, like near M13 levels of fucking dam of like, I guess, fire rate have the damage of a fucking man of war, some shit like that. It's crazy. And the bullet speed might as well just be hit scan because it goes over a thousand, a, a thousand meters per second. So it's basically hit scan. And that's the problem. The, the, that weapon, if you go against it in any situation, it doesn't matter what weapon you are using other than maybe the growl or the Maddox, you're gonna fucking lose the gunfight no matter how good you are. So yeah, you, you touch players might have the CBR meta right now, but trust me, I think the Growl is gonna be far worse. And I think the Growl is actually capable of replacing the CBR once, it, like once it's all said and done, you know, like the nerf is already fully enacted within the game. Like words can't even begin to tell you how unstoppable you are with that weapon. And I do have it in my class setups, but only for like extreme situations. And my dumbass probably should have used it for this game and I probably would have won. And keep in mind, I was basically single-handed, I was alone. 
So the fact that I was even able to get over 100 kills in this game was actually a miracle, especially with the EM2. But back to the camper thing. So yes, it has become a huge issue in this game. A lot of people are just camping. No one wants to move anymore. And it's just, it's kind of sad. I mean, I mean, like the, the playing on controller isn't that fucking bad. So like, yeah, that's what I have to say on that matter. It's like, it's just everyone plays so cowardly now. The moment they get killed once, they immediately pull out the growl and start wrecking you with it. And it kind of like, it, it changed the way that I play because now I have to play a lot more reserved. I can't fucking run around willy nilly anymore because these guys just decide to use a growl against me across the fucking map and nail me like in three shots. I mean, there are even instances in other hardpoint maps uh, and not just this one where there would be like a player on the enemy team on every fucking corner if there's a hard point within a building. It is that fucking sad. People are just too afraid to fucking move. And you could argue that, yes, it's part of the game. You do have to stay within the hard point. But dude, there is so much goddamn open space for you to be on. Like, you don't just have to stick to a corner, dude. It is so fucking annoying. And that's part of the reason why I haven't played too much. I usually have to, like, play with my friends in order to even do decent in some hardpoint matches. Like sometimes I will get like a good team, like just, you know, of randoms. But for the most part, it's just, oh my God. And as you can see right now in the match, I was actually nuking them. But even after all of that, they lo like they lost. I think they, they might've, I don't know, fucking did some Dragon Ball Z power up after I did that shit and like show me their true power. But I mean, honestly, their true power just revolves them just camping even harder. And by the time I lost this match, I was just fucking out. Like I just lost my mind. And like, I usually like, I don't know. I've been more calm, like, you know, in range, in rage induced moments, but there's something about losing in the most bullshit fucking way imaginable that just sets me off because you know that you are far better than these guys, but they only won because they decided to play cowardly. And this happens a lot. And again, usually these instances involve them playing cowardly. Like, you know, they start capping extremely hard so you can't even fucking do anything anymore. And that's another thing. Like this game doesn't really punish campers at all. Me and my friend Parker that were, we, we ended up getting like a fucking, like a 60 plus win streak in ranked as we were climbing up. And the fucking one team that ruined it was just a team of fucking campers. Like we ended up losing the game because they decide to all sit on a head glitch. So yeah, it's the camping situation is something that has kind of like demotivated me to play a lot because it changes the game so much to the point where you're not, it's not even the same game anymore. So I had to cut out of that because honestly, I can't even stand seeing that fucking clip. I mean, it was so majestic at first, you know, I'm getting a nuke, I'm getting a lot of kills. I had such a massive lead. And then all of it just to fucking come to an end just because these guys decide to go like into full cowardice mode. So, yeah, that's one thing like like, you know, it does suck losing in this game sometimes. I mean, COD Mobile is like the only game where I've taken objectives seriously, but getting unfairly screwed out of a win is so infuriating, especially like it's one thing if the players are actually better than you and you're just getting overwhelmed. But it's another thing when it's just a bunch of players that you know are fucking garbage, but they're only getting away with the win because they decided to camp or do some cheap shit. That's something that pisses me off to no end. But I think the fact uh, of them just getting away with it is the one thing that just destroys my mental state like so much. And some of the time, these are just like noob players, like people that are not even in the in level 100 yet that are getting away with shit like that. It's like, no fucking way, dude. Like, and it's it's kind of embarrassing because you should be better than this person. You should have won, but oh my God. Like, it's just it's shit like that. Just, I, I will never get over it. No matter how, how calm I am, no matter how much fucking Nirvana I've reached or some shit, like it's always something that annoys me. But it's also at the same time my fault, given the fact that, you know, maybe I should have used a more powerful weapon but at the same time it's like i have like me i have too much pride like if i like i don't normally use a bison or like a growl unless i absolutely had to and those were one of the moments but i wanted to at least try to beat them with the em2 like that's the thing like i have too much pride like for using a overpowered weapon 
because there's just so much stigma. It's like, oh, you only won because, oh, you had the CBR or you had the growl. So it's like, you know, I'm always that type of person to want to prove myself and, you know, win with the unconventional weapon or weapon that's not like not a lot of people consider actually using. But yeah, that's basically my overall take on how people are playing this game. It's just so much more cowardly. And I understand if on ranks people are doing the exact same shit and they're just getting away with it. It's like, yeah, it's become kind of unbearable. I know like the game isn't going to stay the same forever. I mean, there's going to be changes where you're going to have to switch things up, but not if it's going to make me into a fucking camper as well. Like that's, that's something that's a line I don't ever want to cross. But unfortunately, there might be a time where I have to, and things aren't going to get better. I mean, keep in mind, the Argus is coming out next season, which is a slug round weapon, which I know a lot of people are going to abuse. So that's something I have to keep in mind. Like, like sometimes you have to play dirty, like, even if you don't fucking like it. I mean, there was a time where I just used nothing but overpowered weapons for like a few seasons, and my success rate was so much higher. But I don't know. I just I'm just a person that has too much pride to use o o OP stuff, and I think that's a huge flaw within me. So yeah. But yeah. Anyways, that's all the things I have to say to get out of my chest uh, for COD Mobile that I've been holding on to for a very very long time. But yes, thank you guys for sticking with me throughout this whole entire painful video. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.